Thank you guys again for watching. Today we have Mr. Harry Jambala. Jambala, yes. From HD Realtor. In Yonkers, are you? In Yonkers, yeah. In Yonkers. So, thank you for uh, coming by. Thank you for having me. Take the time to speak with us. The reason we're here today, mm -hmm. owning a home, a piece of land, to many Americans and residents, mm -hmm. it's the American dream. It is. It is. But there is some caveats, okay? Lots of people, they so much into their dream mm -hmm. that they don't think through before they actually make that investment right. of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're here. Thank you, Pat. Tell us a little bit about the preparations, how important it is to research, get a good and reputable agent realtor to agent yeah. to yes. represent you. Yes. So uh, you got to do your homework, basically uh, looking you know, at your finances. You normally would want to look at 33% of your gross uh, you know, annual income. That should be part of your mortgage. It, it's the same thing with, uh, also with the, you know, the mortgage payment or your rent. That's how we see it as a landlord. I'm a landlord myself. Uh, preparing yourself that you're not going to get into trouble in the future. Make sure that you have enough funds to keep you going. Um, finding a realtor. Find somebody that you, you feel comfortable working with. That's going to respond to your calls. It's going to take you out and show you homes that you want to look, not homes that they feel that they want to show you. So if I am looking for a home, it's my first home. Mm -hmm. What should I look for? Or what do I need to consider before? Before, you know, besides the 33% that you're talking about, what are the things that I should consider? Should I go for a private home? Should I go for a three family uh, home? What's the things that... Uh, I would tell you investment property would be the key because the tenants are gonna help you pay that mortgage. So I would, you know, if you could afford it, if you could find a home that is affordable, that's a three family, a multifamily, that's where the route to go. Because that three family in the future is gonna pay for your single family. If I only have enough, or not too much to, for the down payment. Right. And I'm buying a two-family home. Is that a wise it is. investment? It is. It is. But if what you if want, I lose the first floor? Well, that, you, you actually, that's the truth. Yeah. That's why I said you know, in the beginning that you have to have resources. You're going to lose that tenant, you know, and then when you re-rent it, you want to keep it in a rent that actually is affordable for that you know, tenant. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of turnovers. Now, in regards to uh, locations, you know, a lot of people, they buy real estate in bad locations right. to uh, fix it up and then re, uh, resell it. What do I need to look for, you know, before I actually, how should I plan it? Should I have a define my goals before I actually go out? Yes. Make sure that you're prepared to be a landlord also. You know, there's a big responsibility being a landlord, you know, and you got to know how to take care of, you know, the properties that you own. Uh, you asked about location. It all depends, you know, where you want to live, you know, what you can afford, and as far as finding the property. Um, but first things first, I'm going to go backwards. You want to get pre-qualified by, you know, a reputable mortgage uh, broker or banker to see how much you can afford. And then you go on and start looking at properties. Don't look at properties before you get uh, pre-approved. Otherwise, you see a house that you fall in love with, but you can't afford it. And that, that actually is a negative. Now, just before the collapse of a few, uh, few years ago, mm, where lots of... 2000. Where lot, two, 2000, you know, 2006, 2007. Yeah, right. Yeah. Where lots of people lost their homes. And to be honest, that is people still lose yeah. their homes today. Yes because it takes so many years for the whole process, process of eviction, they're still losing their homes today. Right. Uh, a lot of houses was bo no, were bought under fraudulent Correct. Okay, no, it loans. can't happen again. It can't happen again. I think you know, the federal government actually put a stop to that, so you're not going to see that again. There were you know, uh, owners that were buying properties with no money down. Exactly. They were walking out of a closing with money in their pocket because of the sales concessions that they had. Uh, 
that can't happen again. I mean, you know, they made sure, I mean, uh, you know, with TARP that they actually gave back to the bankers, it was going, and why aren't they foreclosing on a lot of the properties? If there's properties that people are still in their homes. When they wrote these mortgages, they sold them before they actually closed on a deal. So you have uh, multiple you know, loans that are out there, but they don't have the wet ink uh, document that they need to foreclose. I think there's legislation that was put in order that they could actually foreclose. There's uh, property owners that walked away from their properties thinking that they were gonna be foreclosed, and that's why we have these ghost houses now, because the banks can't foreclose on that property. That you know, individual could have went back into their home and lived in their home without paying the mortgage for until you know the bank actually does the side or finds a way to foreclose on that property. Now we have a, a friend here who say hello, Henry. It's also a friend of mine, uh -huh. Dominic Miano. Hi. Dominic, you next. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, Dominic, I know him for also 25 years uh -huh. or so. Great guy, owns a lot of property in Yonkers. Great landlord. Now responsibilities of a landlord. It's yes. not just buying a home. There is responsibilities Absolutely. that come with buying a home. Uh, and we see a lot of landlords that they buy, but they're not responsible. They're not responsible for, you know, for the tenants, correct. I'm a landlord myself. I mean, I try to maintain, you know, what they have, you know, the tenants have. Uh, heat, a clean, you know, uh, apartment, clean hallways, you know, have an exterminator there once a month guaranteed so would it be fair to say that if you are if you are a responsible landlord mm -hmm. you should maintain those apartments in a way that you would not mind living there correct that's the way it should be that's way it should a good be. landlord yeah but also now you we have tenants that are now responsible in maintaining their their units also and well definitely that's that's a problem there we have tenants that you know move in they pay two uh two months uh you know uh, no, they pay the rent for two months and then they don't pay us for you know, six and seven months before they get to, you know, uh, evicted from the apartments. And that's a problem also. Well, it's, you know, I think you brought up a very good point because a lot of people say, you know, I pay rent, the landlord, you know, is responsible. Well, th this responsibility, Correct. according to oh, me, yeah. it's a, it's a two-way street. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, the landlord is responsible for certain things that happen in the building, mm -hmm. but you are responsible maintaining your own to maintaining how you live in that apartment right. you're leasing that apartment you're not you don't own that apartment so you should actually you know watch that you know it's like leasing a car you got to maintain it and you re return it back the way exactly. you got it otherwise they're going to charge they're going to charge you for Absolutely. It. why should it be any different right you know in a home Correct. like uh, we have been called for to go to many apartments not private houses apartment buildings, buildings yeah. that are infested with rats yeah we know that is a problem in the with the rats, with rats in, you know, because of all this construction going on. But the rat problem is not just because of the construction going on, but because sometimes because of the tenants themselves. Correct. They open open garbage bags. They throw it out the window, they throw it out of the window, open garbage bags. There is cans there, but they put the bags open right. you know, next door. So that is some fault on the tenant side. Correct. But let's get back to why we're here. We're not here to give a class on how they should live, even though a suggestion doesn't hurt. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Right. Because yes, you wanna you you wanna buy a home, but once you buy that home, you become the landlord. The landlord. You, be you you want you you want to have that responsibility also. Yeah, you have to understand that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. What about tax breaks? Uh, other things that uh, that we should look for as a first-time investor. Well, you could write off, you know, now they had put a cap, you can only write off up to 10000 as a single family home on your taxes. At, for an investment property, there's, you know, other, you could write off your maintenance, your fuels, your taxes, and, you know, whatever the upkeep for the property is. Uh, I mean, I think it's a great thing to own, you know, it's one of the best investments you'll ever make in your life. You put in shelter, you know, a roof over your head, and it's going to, quadruple, you know, it's just gonna keep growing in value. As Roy Rogers once said, buy land because they ain't making no more of it. <laughs> and it's, yeah, but so true. But you gotta buy it in a responsible way. Correct. Okay, because I see uh, folks that uh, 
all they want is buy a piece of land. Right. All they want is buy a <clears> home. <throat> so they don't do the proper research and they jump into a, a purchase that they really cannot afford. Right. Okay, And within a few years, I they collapse. I had, a, I had a, well, multiple experiences, but I had a family that came to me and they saved, you know, both husband and wife worked, you know, two jobs each. Yeah, the husband actually worked the third job. Sa they saved for the down payment. They had the income to go into uh, the property. And they came to look at, you know, to buy the house. They told me about the house. We went and looked at it. I said, God forbid you lose your job. All it takes is two months for you to fall behind and you lost everything that you... you your you life lost. saving. You get sick, God forbid something happens. And I told him, in good conscience, I cannot sell you the home. He got mad at me. He picked up his wife and kids, walked down a block, and went to another broker, and he did buy the home. I didn't wish him you know, bad, but it happened. He got ill, and the house went into foreclosure. He came back, and uh, you know, I, I rented him an apartment, in a, a three-bedroom three apartment. But uh, think. You, you got to think in advance, are you going to get in trouble? Are you going to be able to afford it? You know, you don't want to lose a home. And once you lose a home, it's it's very, very hard to come back to, you know. But you know, yeah. that sort of thing happens all the time. People ask for honesty. They ask for the truthfulness. Mm -hmm. And once you are, yeah. then they get upset Absolutely. because you are. Yeah. They would probably prefer that you lie to them, sell and them I, the house. And I'm not that person. <laughs> but that's where responsibility right. in a good realtor comes into place. You're not just there to make the sale. Right. You're creating awareness mm -hmm. of is this the right investment for you at this particular at the, time. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay? Yes, maybe you want to buy a home. Mm -hmm. But maybe right now it's not the time for Correct. it. Correct. And you know, that's why, I'm sorry, uh, that's why you go and get pre-approved by a, you know, a lender, a reputable uh, you know, mortgage broker or a banker. They'll tell you how much you could afford. Now, Harry, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you this a couple of times. Sure. But if I need to find a responsible realtor, mm -hmm. are you gonna suggest me to somebody else, or are you gonna tell me the name of your company and how to find you? I, I think you gotta feel comfortable with the person that you you know go interview. I mean, you know, normally what you do is you go interview three, four, five different realtor, you know, brokers, broker. and you you see you go out with them. You you know. There's a bond that you actually develop with a broker and an agent that you know from a, an office, and that's what you want. You don't want somebody that's going to be constantly on your back and telling you. It's like when you go to a, a clothing store and there's a salesman following you around. You know, I don't want to be followed around. I, I want to find the, you know if I want you, then I'm going to call you. Same thing with a broker. They should actually be able to show you what you're looking for, not something that they want you to buy. So good advice, guys. You know, don't buy under pressure. No, absolutely not. Okay. If you feel they're being pressured, walk away. You know, it's a big investment. It's one of the largest investments that you're going to make in your life. Probably the so biggest. It is. It so is. go with that gut feeling. If you feel that something is not right, chances absolutely. are it is not right. Correct. Okay. If you don't feel comfortable with your realtor, if you don't feel there is a bond, right, then walk away. Say thank you. You know, absolutely. Thank you. You appreciate yeah. and uh, and move on because when you look for a realtor, like Mr. Henry just said, you're interviewing Correct. your realtor. Absolutely. It, you must feel a certain level of comfort, trust that this realtor is not looking for the, his best exactly. interest, but for your best Seeing interest. Seeing dollars in your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> yes, he wants exactly. to sell you the yeah. house because that's but, yeah, that's what you're in the business for. I mean, that's you know a livelihood, but also you know you want to build a you know, relationship with this person. You want them to refer business to, for you. I mean, I have people, you know, 30 years ago that I sold them property, they're still referring people to me. That's so a good that's sign. That's how it works, yeah. That's a good sign. Now, uh, maybe a, a guy who bought a house 30 years ago now is bringing you his son or daughter to buy a house grandson. from you. <laughs> or grandson, yeah, grandson yeah. to buy a house yeah, from you. Absolutely. And that's the best testimony. It is. I think it is. I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, Building a relationship with the person, you know, seeing them in the street, you know, uh, saying hello, and they're inviting you to, you know, have a coffee, coffee with them. I think it's a very, very touching, uh, you know, warm feeling. Now, you've been in Yonkers for 31 years, 31 since years. 1981. 88, 88. 88, 88 yes. I apologize. So you have seen yes. Yonkers, how it was, how it is, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about the political. 
the part of it. I'm talking about Yonkers as a city. I don't know if you remember how uh, South Broadway used to be. I across do. Across the street from McDonald's. I do. Before Emilio bought those buildings. And he renovated. You know, renovated. They, they did it. They, they, they brought it back. The one, the, the one on the corner was vacant for a long time. Actually, I, was, uh, I had it for sale back then also. And I showed the building and it needed a lot, a lot of work, and they really brought it back. It, they did a beautiful job. All those buildings across from St. Joseph's, uh, you know, all built up, except for the Masonic Lodge that's there. St. Joseph owns, they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. develop it. But I remember Pier Point on the Hudson, which is now downtown. The oh, yeah. What a change, yeah, huh? I know. They had the model, you know, uh, apartment that they actually had set up, and it just went, uh, the water grant actually, uh, the building itself. They, they were foreclosed, you know, they were selling those apartments for $20,000, $25,000. Buena Vista. Yeah. Used I, to, yes. Buena Vista used, houses there, two families, $80,000, yeah. 90000 80, yeah. Can I get one of those for $80,000 nowadays? Not anymore. Not, not even a burnout. Not even yeah, a burnout. Burn <laughs> yeah. But the riverfront is changing. Oh. And that little bit that we see when we go to the riverfront, right. all the way up, Alexander, uh, all the way up, yeah, yeah. All the way, that is changing. It has. Unbelievable. It's beautiful. I mean, and there is more changes coming. Yeah, there is all the way up in the north. There's going to be, uh, you know, another development. We have a bus company that from New York City. Uh, yes, MTA, know, right? Yeah, MTA. That's there. Uh, we've been trying to get them relocate them different places, but they won't uh, move. I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, New York City's uh, mayor. If you were to help us and get them out of there. It would actually uh, help us develop that area also. I mean, it's a stretch that we have from Riverdale, Yonkers, and then Hastings and Center Hudson. I mean, the waterfront there, the views are beautiful. It's yes. It really, really is. And it yes. was very industrial uh, back in the days, but, you know, it's come a long, long way. But this change in Yonkers on the real estate level also causes a problem. Yonkers is becoming such a beautiful place. Yes beautiful houses, uh, beautiful buildings, beautiful views of the, the of Hudson. the Hudson, yeah. that causes a problem. Yes, we like it, how it looks like, right. but people from Yonkers, they don't make that much money. Correct, but if you look at our taxes, I mean, our taxes are more reasonable than you know any other municipalities in Westchester County. Uh, you know, you go to Bronxville, you're paying $45,000, dollars you know. Edgemont, same thing, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year for taxes. You know, average here is between uh, ten to fifteen thousand, which is you know still doable. I mean, you know, uh, living so close to New York City. I mean, I think uh, we're still you know very very good. We're going to be building some new schools, which is a great great thing with the funding that you know we're getting from uh, Albany. I think it's going to be great. You know, our population has grown a lot. Yes. Now. Uh Tell me, you know, I think I asked you this question, but I'm going to ask you in a different way. As a first-time investor, mm -hmm. or maybe a, rep you know, a repeat investor, I'm buying my second home, maybe I used to live in the, in the east, now I want to move to the west, right. I want to live by the, in whatever place in Yonkers. What are the things that I should consider before I purchase the house? In the location. Should I look at transportation to transportation, where I work? Yeah, school. Yeah. What are the things that? Well, the schools. I mean, you know, the kids get bust here, so I mean, you, you, public where, school. Yeah, exactly. So you have, yeah, you have three choices where to send your child. So you know, usually you get one of those choices. Sometimes you know the schools are overcrowded, so they actually move you to another school. Uh, wherever you feel comfortable, that's the place that you want to look and you want to buy but, your home. You know, but Harry, it's not just where I feel comfortable. It's also looking a few years ahead, okay? Maybe today I feel comfortable living in a place with a pool, right. okay, where I can go up the stairs and look at the view, but in 20 years from now, I'm mm -hmm. not getting any younger. Uh -huh. So that's when you actually call me, I'll sell that house and sell you a ranch. <laughs> so solution. <laughs> Always a solution. Do we have ranches in Yonkers? We do. We Are you kidding we, me? We have, s not many, but we do. You have them, uh, Beach Hill has uh, ranches. We have, you know, different uh, areas. I mean, Yonkers is, uh, it's beautiful. I mean, there's all, uh, all types of homes. I mean, Lincoln Park, you have a lot of Tudors, you know, Dunwoody, uh, a lot of Colonials, you know. Uh, you go, you know, uh, in Lawrence Park, they have these massive mansions that they have over there also. They're beautiful, you know. 
Yark is, I believe, is a really, really very, very beautiful place. I mean, very diverse. You know, we have people from all walks of life living in Yark. Not just diverse. I, when somebody tells me that C Yark is a diverse city, I always said diverse and inclusive. Yes, yes. Good point. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> diverse and inclusive. I'm proud and I'm happy to live in Yonkers. So am I. Okay, and I think it's a beautiful city. Uh, and I think that most people that live in Yonkers, mm -hmm. exceptions, you know, that is exception, but most really don't know how Yonkers looks like. No, they don't. They stay within the circle. The circle and they don't, yeah. There's people that have not come to, you know, downtown to see what's going on, all this development exactly. that's going on down here. I think it's a great, great, uh, Thing that's happened downtown Yonkers. Yeah. Thanks to Mayor Mike Spano. Yes. The other day on Yonkers Voice, uh, you know, a uh, social platform where we have thousands of members, you included, we would talk about Yonkers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was telling some folks to come to west side of Yonkers to one of those fine restaurants that Correct. we have. Yes. You know, uh, X2O, Zupas, Zupas yeah. uh, Dolphin, Giovanni's, yeah, Giovanni's, Giovanni's, yeah, the Giovanni's, yeah, French yeah, restaurant. Yeah. And the guy said, are you crazy? You want me to go? I don't think you're my friend. You want me to get <laughs> mug? I said, no. How long have it, has it been since you came down? Down, yeah. <laughs> so it, that's a long time. Probably long that's time. What it, is, yeah. it, it really, really is. But I mean, you know, you have all the TV commercials that uh, you know, the administration puts out. It's Generation Y, and they actually show, you know, everybody coming in, you know, downtown Yonkers. I mean, you go on, uh, you know, the website itself, you see all the development that's going on. So guys, Get off that little circle that you have that I call the circle yeah. of comfort. Uh -huh. Get away from it, break it, and come down to West Yonkers. Correct. This is not the Yonkers that used to be when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. A lot. I'm and they have lot. changed for the best. Much, much better. You much, much better. You have changed. Now, uh, Henry, you a realtor. Do you exclusively deal with buying and selling, or do you also deal with rentals? I do rentals, you know, I do commercial properties, you know, leasing commercial properties, you know, uh, industrial land, you know, any form of real estate I'm, I'm involved in. So let's do a plug in. If anyone is looking to buy, sell any type, any type of property, as Henry said, commercials, if you're looking to rent, uh, whatever, for all of your realty, realty needs, uh, needs, okay? We have it all. You have it all. Now, where are you located and have, what's your phone number? I have two offices. I have one at 655 McLean Avenue, and uh, I just actually moved one door over. I was at 955, now, now I'm at 953 McLean Avenue. Uh, the phone number is 914-376-1000. The other office is 914-226-8800. So, guys, your first investment, the only thing that uh, you should consider it's not just that down payment. No. Okay. There is a few. Of there's a lot of programs, that, you know, which I, you know, there's FHA loans, there's uh, VA loans, there's conventional loans. You could go as low as 3% down as a down payment. There's uh, a company, it's called NACA, where you don't put no down payment and there's no closing costs. Uh, but you got to go through this program. It's a 12 month program. You look it up, it's NACA. Uh, and they actually, you know, uh, there's multiple banks that will give you, you know, loans and your interest rates much less than, uh, you know, the conventional loans that you get from uh, the banks. And there's no down payment and no closing costs. I think it's a great program. So there is no fee for me to go and interview you if I'm in the market. So Not at all. What is your number, Henry? 914-376-1000. Give him a call if you are in the market. If you need to know more, interview him. Absolutely. It's all about interviewing. Interviewing and feeling comfortable with your agent that you're going to be dealing with. Before you buy. It's important to do your research. On that note, we conclude our interview. Thank you very okay? much. And uh, Henry, maybe I forgot to ask you something that you feel it's important. Did I ask all the questions or is that something? I think something? you did. I think you pretty much covered it. So, Yonkers Voice. It's always ready and prompt to bring you the information that we think it's important. We don't want to just cover what's happening on the street, but we want to give you also information that might be helpful for you on a personal basis. So stay tuned for more.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.